Hello and welcome to Ethics in the News. My name's Hannah Storm and I'm the director of the Ethical Journalism Network. In this edition, I'm speaking with the founder of the Ethical Journalism Network, Aidan White, and I began by asking him why ethical media audits were so important for news organisations. I think there are two reasons why ethical auditing is really important for journalism these days. The first is the need for media to uh, build trust with their audience and to identify their journalism as completely different to the chaotic and information confusion that people find on the internet, where a lot of people, they don't know what's reliable, what's not reliable, they're confused by misinformation and fake news and so on and so forth. So it's very important that journalism separates itself out and identifies itself as being ethical, morally valid, true truthful, relevant, and a reliable stream of information that people can trust. The second reason is that media today find themselves in, a, in the midst of a massive sustainability crisis. Uh, media no longer are able to pay for journalism in the way that they used to in the past, through advertising and high circulation revenues and so on. So very often we've seen over the past decade the collapse of financial support for journalism, particularly investigative journalism, and media are looking for new streams of uh, funding to help pay for the journalism that the public needs. But uh, how to do that is, you know, is very difficult. Many media are turning to donors and foundations and public authorities for financial support to pay for their journalism. But this raises another question, which is, if people are asking for money, on what basis do you give them money? And the, the idea of ethical auditing is to help media to identify themselves as reliable and trustworthy and to show that they are not just talking the talk about standards and ethics, but they're putting them into practice. So by ethical media auditing, establishing standards, monitoring those standards and keeping those standards up to date, media are able to illustrate how they are producing public interest journalism that is entirely trustworthy. And through an ethical media audit, media are able to say to the public authorities or to the foundations or the donors that they're seeking support from, look, here we are, we're doing good work and we're reliable and trustworthy. We hope that you'll support us. Of course, the EJN has good reason to promote ethical audits, not least because the very idea of media having a regular ethical review of their work was pioneered by Bernd Olofsson, a member of the Board of Trustees of the EJN, who for many years as editor-in-chief of VG, Norway's largest selling newspaper, pioneered the development of regular and routine review of the newspaper's standards and the work of its journalists. He thought this was very important as a way of ensuring that readers had access to all of the information about how the newspaper works and how the journalists are bound by uh, core values and standards. And it was this that formed the basis of the work that the EJN uh, started on ethical media audit auditing generally, and this also helped to uh, inspire the work of the Journalism Trust Initiative. If you'd never heard about the idea of a media audit, an ethical media audit, if you were a news organisation that says, oh, that sounds like an interesting idea, you know, we're struggling with sustainability, we're struggling with funding, how would you describe a media audit to an organisation that's perhaps a bit reticent about it or not, a bit unclear? Well, I mean, it's really strange, isn't it, that, that, that media organisations that are in the business of disclosing information about everybody else are very often very shy about disclosing information about their own ways they work. Although this is uh, rather strange, the fact of the matter is, is that I an mean, ethical media audit is nothing more than a media reflecting on the way that it does its own work, uh, the way that it operates, uh, the way that its journalists perform, the way that it tests the veracity of the information that it's publishing, the way that it engages with the public in order to deal with complaints or to correct errors and so on. So actually an, an audit is, is little more than a piece of self-reflection in which media ask themselves, are we working well? Are we maintaining our standards? Are we able to do better? Is there something we can do better? And these are sensible questions which a responsible organisation should be asking themselves uh, routinely anyway. So there's nothing um, difficult, I think, about 
about the notion of an ethical media audit, what it is basically doing is saying to media as part of their normal work to have consistently and regularly a period of review about how they work, how they do their work, how their journalists work, how they engage with the public, and also just to monitor their own performance. So in that way, it's, it's a sort of self-health check for media to make sure that they are doing what they say they're doing, being ethical and producing good work, but making sure that they're monitoring exactly how they do it. So obviously the idea of media audits sounds like a really interesting and and valuable one for many news organisations, but I think so many different organisations with so many different resources and such different scale, how do you scale that out? If you're a small organisation, how do you cope with the media audit as opposed to if you're a big organisation? Presumably there's no one size fits all approach to this. No, I mean, mean, obviously, if you're a small organisation, you can't devote a whole department or even somebody to sort of carry out an audit and so on, which is one of the reasons why, I mean, I believe very strongly that the auditing process should be as simple and as efficient as possible. It's actually quite easy for even a small organisation to monitor, say, on a weekly basis, the way that it's working, to record any sort of particular problems that they've had and, and to be able to assess their ability to maintain her high standards. So, for example, what an audit might be involving is, you know, how many complaints have there been? How have these complaints been dealt with? This is work that you would do anyway. So it's a matter of being able to find an efficient way of just recording that information and collating it together. You know, obviously, there's some basic information. You know who are the people who work for you, how many people are there, what is the uh, gender breakdown, how trained are they, what do you do in terms of providing training all sorts of sort of basic information is already there it just needs to be collated so although it might sound and if if one's doing it in detail it could be quite a time-consuming process it actually can be done quite simply and quite easily. Now, we developed the Journalism Trust Initiative, being aware of all of these problems that are now facing journalism. During 2019, carried out an intensive investigation into how best for media to be able to identify themselves as a trustworthy brand. And they basically developed the the notion of auditing into a sort of a Very simple process. Now, more than 100 media organisations were involved in this process. And what they did was is is that they assembled a whole series of questions that needed to be answered by uh, media. And they provided a suggested set of editorial guidelines to help media, even those media which were perhaps too small to have developed editorial guidelines, but which actually would help the media be able to understand, you know, how they're working and the issues that they need to raise when they're auditing their their own process. And this um, Journalism Trust Initiative has, as I say, developed quite a straightforward and simple way of helping media to identify what they need to identify in order to establish themselves as a trusted brand. Just for those who aren't familiar with the concept of the Journalism Trust Initiative, what is it exactly? Well, it was set up by Reporters Without Borders and the Global Editors Network and the European Broadcasting Union with the support of groups like the Ethical Journalism Network and and the International Press Institute and many others. And uh, it brought in a lot of uh, media organisations like The Guardian, the BBC and and many others. And, and the idea idea was basically to try to help media identify themselves as trusted brands. If we're moving into a world where people really can't tell what's true and what's not true, what's reliable and what's not reliable uh, on the internet, it's very important that the stuff that we regard as most trustworthy and most useful, that is to say ethical journalism, can be easily identified. So the idea was to try to separate journalism and news media out from the chaos and confusion of the internet and and, and the World Wide Web. And basically that's what was done. Now it's not an easy process because the idea of the Journalism Trust Initiative was to try to develop a way for journalism to identify itself as trustworthy and as a brand worth recognising in the same way as standards are 
are imposed on, for instance, manufacturing industries, car production or the health industries and, and so on and so forth. And these, these can be very complicated indeed. So what was done with the Journalism Trust Initiative was to simplify this process. So you have what's called a self-certification process. So if a media organisation or a group of journalists are working together in one country, they can associate themselves with, say, a local editor's forum or a local press freedom group or a, a national body which is providing support for journalism, and they can use that body to help certify them as a trustworthy brand. So the idea of self-certification is, is really very important a part of this because it actually takes us along the road of self-regulation, which is one of the guiding principles for journalism. Thank you. And I think that, you know, I'm just interested by the idea of the extra value. I see that as a kite mark that you're effectively referring to. And obviously, self-regulation is really important and good governance. But what added value can organisations such as the Ethical Journalism Network that we're part of bring to this process? And how can they kind of support and foster and mentor organisations out there in the longer term? Because obviously, this is not just a, a short term thing that we're talking about this audit process. No, I think the Ethical Journalism Network has a really important and significant role to play. First of all, the EJN has been involved in the pulling together of the editorial guidelines which are being used globally as a sort of basic set of advice to media about editorial standards that they should follow. Secondly, I think the uh, Ethical Journalism Network brings together groups of people, editors, owners, working journalists, uh, media support groups, who really can provide good advice to media on how best to ensure that the work that they do and the organisation they're running is fit for purpose. I think the EJN can help monitor the way that standards are being set and are being developed in various countries and in various regions. And I think the EJN is also very well placed because it has good relations with the self-regulatory bodies, press councils and media commissions and so on and so forth. So I think as we see this need for self-branding, for building trust in media, media developing, a group like the Ethical Journalism Network has an enormously important role to play. And that was Aidan White speaking with me for the Ethics in the News podcast. Aidan was the founder of the Ethical Journalism Network.